my nephew is 11 now. And it's only ever when I meet my nephew that I feel old. Um, I don't like to see him too often. Um, but once every six months, he comes down. He lives in Scotland with, um, with, his, uh, with his, his mother. And uh, they come down and stay with us about every six months. Um, and he came down fairly recently. And um, he walked through the door. And of course, I hadn't seen him for a while. He's 11 years old. I thought, you know, he's going to say, how are you, Uncle Matt? Nice to see you, Uncle Matt. It's been a while, Uncle Matt. No, he walked through the door, and the very first words out of his mouth were, what's the Wi-Fi password? Um, so, yeah, yeah, you've all been there, right? Um, so I said to him, um, actually, it's quite complicated because, you know, I try and keep it fairly secure. I said, give me your email address, and I'll email it to you. And I didn't expect the next words out of his mouth. What's email? An 11-year-old boy. What is email? Two things that really jumped into my head when he said that. How's he going to feel when we drag him into our organizations at 16, 17, 18 years old and we force all this old crap technology onto him? How does that make us look as a company to somebody who's coming into the industry when we force them to use these kind of technologies? That's the first thing. The second thing that it makes you do, and I will spare you the embarrassment because this is how it goes. When somebody says to you, what is email, you then have to explain it to them. And the only way you could explain it is you have to go right back. Once upon a time, we used to write letters and put them in envelopes. Um, anybody who's asked you what is email is now looking at you as if you've got two heads. And you have to keep going, push on through. Um, and then you, and you have to use the double quotes as well. So then we came up with electronic mail, where I write an email and I send it to somebody, and I think they receive it, and they might reply to me. At that point, he held up his phone, and he just went, I use this app. He said, I can see all my friends are online, and if one of them doesn't reply to me, it's because they don't like me anymore. And I, and I just, I love the, uh, the innocence of childhood. <laughs> but because but but I was standing there going, yeah, that makes sense. I'm not, what an idiot I am. Um, and so you kind of see this. So there's this pace of change, um, and that's his expectation is that I, I just want to be able to send someone a note. I know they're there. I want to send them a note and I expect a response. And if they're not responding, why aren't they responding? So very much that's driving the, a complete change in the way that companies need to think about how do we engage with our customers when that's becoming the new normal. And then there's the changing demands and expectations. You're seeing a theme here. My presentation becomes more critical of children as I get older. Um, but just in case you're interested, on average, people check their emails 40 times per hour until teenagers, if you have them, are sending about 34 texts at night after bedtime. Um, I'm trying to see if we can break the 40 times per hour record for the next, uh, the next 20 minutes or so. Um, but uh, here's one that I just thought was amazing. A page load slowdown of 100 milliseconds, according to Amazon they believed would cost them 1% in global sales. 100 milliseconds. That is how impatient we are. And it's because it feels a little bit spongy. It doesn't feel quite as rapid as it should do. And we have choices. I'll go somewhere else. So we have to, as companies, be thinking about how do we deal with peaks and troughs? Because we can't allow that to happen at the, the, at the worst of times, let alone when we've got a peak in demand. A peak in demand, we cannot allow this to happen because 1% in sales in peak demand is huge. On that, and here's something else that's happened is we've become more digital as a, as a kind of a nation or as a, as, a, as a world. When do you think one of Amazon's busiest days is? Like Friday, Cyber Monday? There's not, give the man a point. Christmas Day. Which you kind of think, me, growing up in technology, Christmas Day is, that, well, that's when we do the upgrades, right? Because no one's going to be around on Christmas Day. And this is what happens. And I'll play it out for you. For the weeks leading up to Christmas, you have been talking about the 65-inch LCD TV that you want. You've been dropping articles on the table, leaving pages open, pointing it out when it comes on TV, um, walking past shops and just making sure they know exactly which model number it is of your 65-inch TV that you want for Christmas Day. You have done the groundwork. And on Christmas morning, you come wandering downstairs, and you look over to the corner of the room, and there's a parcel, and it is clearly not a 65-inch TV, at which point you start drinking. <laughs> 
and by about lunchtime, you're going, oh, fuck it, I'm buying it. And, <laughs> and you jump on Amazon. And 100 milliseconds is a little bit of thinking time, um, which they want to make sure doesn't happen. So, so we start to see patterns of behavior that we never saw before. We've just assumed that, that when people were buying things, you buy them when the shops were open. You buy them, you know, you didn't. So we're starting to see these new patterns. And it means that companies, even like Amazon, have to be thinking, those kind of days where most people would say are actually down days, those for us are up days. Um, and it'll be lots more organizations that are like that as well. So I'm going to give you something here. You are not to use this very frequently. I'm sharing this with you because I think it's valuable. I'm giving you it's a customer service, I think I shall call it. If you ever are in the situation where somebody asks you what's email and you have to describe it to them and you start feeling really, really stupid and they're looking at you as if you're really, really stupid. I'm going to give you this. Show them this. Any one of these four things will send a teenager or anyone below the teenage years off into a darkened room, crying, shivering, and shuddering. I like to call them the four horsemen of the modern apocalypse. 